So today we're going to talk about prayer pattern of Jabez. So the, we've all heard this. It's good for us to go over it again. And uh, I want to talk about a little bit more about the prayer of Jabez because most Christians have a hard time praying and don't know what to say. We run out of things to say after five minutes. We're like, okay, I'm, I'm done, God. Okay, what, what do I start talking about? Because prayer is the main discipline of our life. Prayer is something that should be just a staple of the Christian diet. Amen? It should be something that we do all the time. It's something that's a part of us. It's something that is it's connected to us. But most don't even try to pray because they feel like God's not going to listen to them. Come on. I've, ever, I, I've felt like that before where I missed it. I, may, I missed the mark. I said something I shouldn't have said. I've been doing things I shouldn't have been doing. We've all been doing it. We've all, we're not perfect. And we feel like I can't pray because God's not going to listen to me. But I'm here to tell you, God wants to listen to you. He wants to hear us. And some people have always said, well, why do I got to pray if he already knows things before I know them? Why? Well, it's because you need to know them. All right. He needs to talk to you. And he needs to download some information that you need. It's not that we're going to make God do something. It's us getting in line with what God's already doing for our life. Amen? So the idea is that God's already in motion. God's already doing something. God already has a plan. God already has things ready for you to do. You just need to get in line with what he wants to do. All right? And so that's what prayer is. When we're asked to pray, even in public, we freeze up. And you know, I've asked people, hey, can you pray? And they're like, oh, it's like if I asked them to do something like really bad or something, or can you jump across this mountain? Oh, I don't know. But prayer, it should be something like, yeah, sure, I talk to him all the time. All the time I talk to God. Sure, let's go. I'm going to talk to him right now. And we just blam, talk it out. So prayer is a conversation. It's not that you, you respect God, but it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a prayer is just talking to God. It's not just has to be in King James language. It doesn't have to be in the Amplified language. It just needs to be in your language. Amen? It needs to be in your tongue. It needs to be something simple, easy. God, I'm frustrated. God, I need this. God, I've praised you. I've worshipped you. Now, Lord, here's what's going on in my life. And so I've heard people, you know, quote, you know, as they're praying, they're, they, they forget some things or they forget some prayers, and they, all of a sudden they start singing a song because they don't know what else to say. You know, and they start singing something, hallelujah, or something, they forget. But the idea here is that we need to pray and make it something simple because prayer is simple. Come on, say prayer is simple. It's simple. It's talking to God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8 has been our, our, main, our main prayer, our main scripture. And it says, pray in the spirit in every situation, in every kind of prayer, and in every request there is. So in every situation and every type of prayer, you and I need to pray. Whatever, what is type? That's a pattern. We're talking about patterns. God, Jesus gave his disciples a pattern of prayer. Amen? Gave them a pattern. Hey, this is the pattern of prayer that we're going to use. Jesus, teach us not how to do miracles. Isn't that interesting? He just said, teach us how did you, Jesus, teach us how to do that loaves of fishes act, that mid magic act you did. That was awesome. I need to do that in my refrigerator right now. How do you do that? You know, God, how did you walk on water? Can you show us how to walk on water? God, can you show? No. He said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And all the things that, Je that they could have asked Jesus for, they asked Jesus to pray. Ain't that interesting? So why, why do you think prayer is such an important thing? If God is, is Jesus said, my disciples asked me to pray, I need to then teach them how to pray. And so prayer is something that, we need to learn. We need to have a pattern of prayer. We talked about the tabernacle prayer. We talked about how that's laid out. Jesus talked about a certain type of prayer also. But today we're going to talk about the prayer of Jabez. And so in First Chronicles, it starts, if you've ever re uh, 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 read Chronicles, Chronicles is a chronicle like the, the you know, the Houston Chronicle. It's just a, it's just a chronicalization of, of names. And this begat this, and this begat that, and that begat this, and this begat that, and they begat this. And you're like, oh, my gosh, can I get through Chronicles? My gosh, it's terrible. I can't go through all these names. But then as they're going through Chronicles, Chronicle then stops and says, hey, there was a guy named Jabez. So in all this thing, the Bible stops and gives Jabez a mention. 
an honorable mention. And it starts to show, and look what it says in First Chronicle chapter 4, verse 9. It's there in your outline, and it's there up here on, this, on there. And if you're watching by live stream, you can open up the Bible Gateway and take a look at it and follow us by, by that. It says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Oh, goodness gracious. So Jabez, the name of Jabez, it's pain. So how would you like to be grown up and your name is pain? It can work for you. It cannot work for you. Oh, here comes pain. Here comes pain. Here comes the pain. Here comes Jabez, the pain. He's the pain. I don't want to say the next part here. Y'all are y'all thinking it. Here's the pain. So, so his mother named him pain. Can you imagine your mother naming you pain? That would be, so, be terrible. And, there, and they live with this, this attachment to his name called pain so it's like us living with an attachment of things in our life where you were an ex this an ex that and we live with that label and so Jabez had to live with a label of pain his name had pain and your name maybe life has given you a name and that name is debt that name is sickness that de- that name is is divorce that name is separation that name is uh, 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 whatever that name is, you've lived with that name. You had, to, you had a reputation. Come on, we've all met people, you know, that, that that's their reputation. No, that's not, that's not, that's not his, that's not, that's not Reuben. That's Smokey. His name is Smokey, you know. Why? You don't want to know. It's, that's Smokey, man. Because he has a name attached to him because of what and who he is. So Jabez, and the reason why I'm belaboring on this is because Jabez out of all the all the, the 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 things he could have prayed about, he never mentions his pain. He never prays to God saying, "God, my pain, man, God, my mother, and my this, and my that, and my that." No, he never complains. He gives glory to God. And so you and I shouldn't be, well, God, this is where I'm at. You know, I'm just I call it like it is, God. No, 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 no. God wants to call those things that be not as though they are. Amen? God wants you to see your future differently than what the world or what life is putting you up on a a platter. You don't call yourself uh, uh, with uh, in lack. You call yourself what? Blessed. You don't call yourself sick. You saw yourself the healed. I'm being healed in Jesus' name. You don't call yourself uh, uh, sorry or you don't call yourself ugly. You don't call yourself you're wonderfully and beautifully made. You call yourself what the word God has said God calls you to be. So Jabez cried out to the Lord. Look what it says in the next one. Jabez cried out to God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me indeed. Okay, that word indeed, that, that bless me, the other scripture says indeed. How many of you read indeed where it says, it says indeed? That indeed is like adding, you know, like those emojis that says 100, 100, 100, 100, you know. Adding emojis like bam, 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 like a, like something like that, and it's like adding emojis like four or five emojis. Indeed, men to the to the fullest. Enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from what pain. He says. Finally, he says there, so I'll be free from pain. Because his name is what pain. Jabez is is is, is means pain. But Jabez never complains to the Lord. He says, all these things are going to keep me from experiencing pain. If you want to keep yourself from experiencing pain, you've got to get yourself in the word of God and call yourself what God calls you to be. I am who he says I am. And so let's go for the, we're going to talk about this. This is a pattern that we see it. So number one, it says, oh, that you would bless me. That word bless means barak, means God is going to come down personally and bless you. So number one, pray for blessing. Number one, if you're writing down your outline, pray for blessing. Oh, that you would bless me. God wants to bless you not just with money, but he also wants to bless you with everything. Come on, say everything. God wants me rich. Come on, say that. Rich. That word rich, all of a sudden, everybody thinks money. No, rich in, in, in joy. Rich 
in laughter, rich in, 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 in emotions, rich in health, rich in all things. Rich means to the fullest. Yes, rich, God wants you to have money, but he doesn't want money to have you. He wants us to be able to have that money because money doesn't do anything but amplify who you really are. Really, to be honest with you, technology didn't do anything. It didn't change us. It really just brought to life who we really are. If you really look at it, the apps didn't do anything. They didn't change us. They just started showing America what America really looks like. Come on, somebody. If you really look at it, we didn't know America like the way America was. We didn't know. We only knew what our neighbors and our, our, the people of our influence, of our circle, that's all we knew. But then all of a sudden, technology started picking up, and start, we start now knowing what are really America and what really people are and how their, their attitude is and what they believe in and, and, and how they some, – some people are, are angry. Some people are racist. Some people are, are certain uh, of certain uh, uh, thinking and certain way of, of believing. We didn't know that until technology then revealed who we really are. So in, in reality, when you, see, when you see a lot of the millennials and a lot of people on, on, on the web and, you re, and you're reading it through Facebook and, it, and Instagram, you're reading it, all they're doing is telling you who they are. You might see them show about music. Well, that's who they are. They love music. You might see them showing a bunch of pictures of, of, of food. That's, that's they love food. <laughs> you might see them fishing. Hey, check out this, this fish. Check out this. They love what? Fishing. What are they doing? They're just revealing who they are. If, they, if, they, if they're into, maybe they're a DJ, so every, every picture you see on their Facebook, hey, I'm here at the Reliance Center wrapping it up, and I'm doing it for the Texans. I'm over here doing a, a quinceanera. I'm over here doing this. What are they doing? They're telling you who they are. So if you look on, online, you're going to find out who people are. And so God is saying, hey, I want to bless you. But I'm not just going to bless you just to bless you. The Bible says God wants to personally come down and bless you, not just with finances, but with everything in life. God says that God wants to provide you from his warehouse a blessing. And how many of you know God has a pretty big warehouse? He hasn't run out of stuff. He has not forgotten us. He says, I want to personally come down, and I want to personally bless you. Bible says he's already laid out everything for us. He says you're blessed. Whether you say you're you're not and say, man, I'm cursed, man, I'm I'm like, man, I'm I'm no good, and I can't, I'm not smart enough. God says, I still call you blessed. I still call you rich. I still call you successful. Because even though you think you're not, God says something otherwise. Psalms 18:35 says, You give me a shield of victory, and in your right hand sustains me. And you stoop down to make me great. Come on, somebody. God stoops down to make you great. Go tell the person next to you, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Tell the other person next to you, come on, don't ignore them. Go look back, look back. You're great. So I'm great. There you go. Come on. You know, you know one thing, one, one thing, Muhammad Ali, remember him? I, I sting like a, something like that. I move like a bee or something like that. What was that? Kind of like that? There you go. There you go. Everybody knows that, right? He used to have people, he used to have people behind him always telling him. He hired them to tell him, you're the greatest. You're the greatest. You're the greatest. You're the greatest. You ever seen those guys coming in for a fight and they're like, they're standing behind them and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they're like, they're, they're telling, what are they doing? They're pumping them up. You're the greatest. You're going to knock this guy out. You're going to do that. And that's how Muhammad Ali always heard somebody behind him. You're the greatest. There ain't nobody like you. You're fast. You're bad. You're, oh, your man, you, you, blah, blah, blah. They're, they're telling him. He's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's who I am. That's why he would go up there and be so arrogant. Why? Because he's like, he heard it so many times. He was fully convinced that he was the greatest. And here you and I got something called the Holy Spirit in us. Come on. Who's constantly say you are the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're the greatest. You're more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ. There's nobody could come against you. No devil, no demon, no spirit, no person, no government, no nothing could come against you because God is with you. Come on, somebody. Come on, give him praise for that because he's good. 
The Word of God is constantly telling you, you're the best. You move like a butterfly and sting like a bee, right? That, that's it. The Holy Spirit's telling you, you move, you, you, you slick, you, you, you sharp, you're the quick, you're intelligent, you look good, you smell good. I mean, the Holy Spirit's always encouraging you. When you go to the Word of God, the Word of God, you never leave there after reading God's Word and go, man, I'm depressed. No, you never do. Why? Because the Word of God is constantly encouraging you, saying you're blessed. God wants you blessed. He wants you to be great. There's nothing, nothing great about us. Only when God has his hand upon us, then we become great. Amen? You are successful because God's blessing is on your life. God gets the glory when you're successful. God wants you blessed for a reason. God wants you to have more so that you can help others. I'm not talking about the name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. I'm not saying none of that. Well, I need another how. I need no, no, I'm not saying any of that. God wants you to be blessed, and he wants to get money through you and to you. He wants to get blessings through you and to you so that you can then be a blessing. So that how can God bring, God don't have money up there. God don't have influence up there. God doesn't have anything up there. He needs people like you and I. He needs to bless you at your company, at your life, so that you can then be the hand and feet of God. That's why. Why am I working here? Because God wants you to be working there. Why do I have this position? Because God wants you to have that position. Why am I in this place? Because God wants you there for a season. God needs you there because there's darkness there, and God needs a light there. And you're that light. God can't use me. I'm, I'm busted, disgusted, and can't be trusted. That's good. God can use you. God can use you. He loves using people that are busted, disgusted, and nobody trusts them. God loves using those people because they're the best. Because out of that, you can see God doing great things in their life. Because he gets the glory. Genesis 12, 2 says, I will bless you, and you will be a blessing to what? Others. Not just to yourself. So here's the prayer. I put a line there that you can write this down. Lord, give me more than I need. Write this down if you want. Lord, give me more than I need so I can be a blessing to the world around me. Lord, bless me more than I need so I can be a blessing to the world around me. I'll say it one more time. God, bless me. God, give me more than I need so I can be a blessing to the world around me. You're blessed to be a blessing. Amen? So what would you do with more? If I ask you, uh, if God gave you a bunch, what would you do? I don't know. I, you know, give. I would give to others. So here's what we're going to do. Number two, we pray for influence. We pray for influence. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. Back then, what, what he's talking about, back then these were farmers. you got to remember. And so they can only sow seed right at the fence line. So what he's saying, Lord, I don't want to just sow seed here. I want to sow seed over there. Enlarge my territory on where I have an influence. Because right now I can only influence in the, in, the, in the land, in the area that I'm in. But take the fence out and enlarge my territory. Make me be able to go into places where I'm not able to sow things right now, but enlarge me and I will sow something there, Lord. Come on. So Jabez is saying, God, enlarge my territory so I can have an influence, so I can, I can help people that are not happy become happy, so I can help people who are sad to become joyful, so I can bring the good news to those who are hurting. Amen. Amen? The Bible is good news. We shouldn't come to people and bring them to say, you're going to hell and I, you're going to hell. That's not good news. That's not good news. What's good news to the poor man? You don't have to be poor no more. What's good news to the hurting? You don't have to hurt no more. What's good news to the blind? You don't have to be blind anymore. What's good news to those that are, that are, that are lonely? You don't have to be lonely anymore. That's the good news we bring. We don't need to barrage them with, with you're, you're a sinner. They know they are. I knew I was before I came to God. I, you didn't have to tell me you're a sinner. I know I'm bad. What do you have to tell me? What I did not have nobody telling me was I'm a blessing. What I needed somebody to do was to just to give me a hug and say, I'm with you. I believe in you. You're, 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 you can make it. 
I believe that you, God is with you. God is for you. That's what I needed. I needed somebody to, to believe in me, the best in me, not tell me who I am, but tell me what I'm about to be, what God wants to do in me. Tell me, tell me something that I don't already know. Enlarge my view. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge the way I see things. Enlarge my view. Enlarge my vision. Because I can only see this much. Happiness is not just because you have no problem. The most happiest people are not the ones without problems. It's the ones that see things and see life differently. They're the ones that see life through lens of more. Successful people have a clear purpose in their life. If you look at successful people, they don't just see themselves, but they also see others and they're pouring into others. Even people that are not Christians that I watch on YouTube that are, that are YouTube influencers and these businessmen and businesswomen, they're not even Christians and yet they always are trying to help others. And they're successful. Why? Because it's a law. What a man ever a man sows, that shall he also reap. They're reaping and they're doing what the word of God says. Ephesians chapter 1, 18 says, I pray also that the eyes of my heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope in which he has called me. The riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. People are better when they know their purpose. You and I are better, a better husband, a better employee, a better, a better member of the church, a better husband, a better father, a mother, when we know our purpose. When we know why we're here. I'm not here just to work and pay bills and make somebody else rich. <laughs> Come on. I'm here for a purpose. God made things with a purpose. A tree, an apple, a, a wood, a, all these things. He made animals with a purpose. Just like somebody made this pulpit, it has a purpose. And so it's fulfilling its purpose right now. And it's doing what it was made to do. So you and I are made just like this pulpit. It was made to be in front of other people as it was be. It's made to, to hold things. It's made to do those things. And you and I were made specifically for a reason. And until you find out what that purpose for, you will always be searching for the rest of your life. And you'll never be satisfied because you're not doing your purpose. And what we try to do and grow is to help you find your purpose. And it doesn't mean it has to be something spiritual. It just means it has to do what you want to do. Do what you love to do. Do what you're meant to do. Don't live life with regret saying, I wish I would have done the thing that I love to do. We've got people going to, to college going to college and getting a degree in an area they don't even love only because it's money and they really hate their career. We got a bunch of people going to college, getting their degree only for money, and they really want to be a photographer, or they really want to be an artist, or they really want to be a nurse, or they really want to be something else, a mechanic or a teacher, and they're like, I really want to do these things, but because everybody's gravitating to here and everybody's gravitating, I'm going to do it because of that. And then they're, they're lonely, and they're depressed, and they're just living life just all oh, just terrible. I cannot, I cannot take a hammer and try to use it as a screwdriver. Oh, I can. I can. Wham! I can do that. That's usually what I do. If I can't find a screwdriver, I'm going to wham that thing in there. But it's not made for that. You and I were made specifically for a reason. Here's what we need to do. God says in Psalms chapter 2, verse 8, Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. God is going to get you in front of people. God wants to have you. God, make me the focus of your purpose. God, God, bring me in front of people of influence so I can bring your word. God wants to use me with a purpose. Do you know, there, here's, here's one thing. God, uh, God is using me in a weird way because I'm, my daughter plays volleyball. That's why she's not here, but she's playing volleyball. And at the volleyball place, I'm there doing devotionals now in the morning. I never thought that. They just said, hey, we need somebody to do devotionals. Okay, cool. I'll do a devotional. And now I'm there. I've been doing devotionals there for several years now. And people are like, this is cool. They're in there like, hey, this is nice. I, there's no other facility that offers that. We're always missing a Sunday. But it's so awesome that we're going to have a, a, a real quick service here. And I go, yeah, it's really nice. This facility wants to have a devotional and believes in putting God first. 
in the lives of, 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 the, of the girls and the lives of the family. And so because God says, hey, I got, I got that going on, but you're going to be an influence right there. I said, I would have never thought that. And I got parents coming in. I've got teenagers. I got, you know, 12 year olds, 13, 14, all from, from age 11 all the way to 18. And I'm, I'm just giving them the word of God just before they're about to go play. I'm, I'm teaching the, the parents, and their parents are just like, oh man, I needed to hear that. I really need to hear that. What is that God doing? I want to put you in places of influence so that you can then speak to others. Amen? All right, here's, not, here's, here's what you're going to write down Lord, show me your purpose for my life. So I can live a, bi a life bigger than my own. Lord, show me your purpose for my life so I can live a life bigger than mine. Come on, that's, that, that's a big statement there. Lord, show me your purpose for my life so I can live a life bigger than my own. Those of you that are watching by, by video, God wants you to, to have a purpose in your life. And he wants you to live life bigger than your life. If you're going to do that, you're going to need God. Hmm? You're going to need God. Number three, pray for presence. Pray for his presence. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. Let your hand be with me. Whatever you have asked God to do in your life, you need God's hand. You need God's anointing on your life. Amen? Great. The Bible says that the anointing is what breaks the yoke and takes bondage away. It's the, it's the anointing of God. It's the hand of God. It says in Acts chapter 11, verse 21, the Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. What happened? When God's hand is there, things happen. When God's hand is there, miracles are going to happen. It brings success. It brings breakthrough to people's lives when God is there. When the hand of God is there, opportunities happen. When the hand of God is there, the anointing's there. When the hand of God is there, unexpected outcomes come your way. When God's hand is there. So you pray, God, Father, I, I pray, let your hand be with me. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 15, we're going to look at it right here. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us from here to there. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me, with your people, unless you go with us? Come on, somebody. God, I cannot go into this new job. I cannot go into this new, this new thing unless you go with me because if you don't go with me I'm going on my own I'm going on my own if you don't go with me Lord then it's, I'm just trying my best God I'm about to go and make a life decision help me Lord I'm about to do this help me Lord go with me look what it says what else will they distinguish me from other people from all the other people on the face of this earth and the Lord said to Moses I will do the very thing you have asked amen because you got to remember, God's presence would always leave. There was a fire by night and a, and, a, and a cloud by day. And the presence of God would go, I'm moving. And they would have to follow the presence. And that they would bring up the tabernacle, put it all away, put the tent, bring it on, and go follow. And then the Lord, the, the presence would go poof, right there. They would set it up and says, bam, we want to be where you are. You never saw the children of Israel going, yeah, God, I see you going that way. We're going to go this way, all right? We're going to go that way. We're going to go set up a tent over here. It would be weird. There's the, there's the cloud, and there they are setting up a tent over here, and God's over there. And God says, well, and, and they're expecting God, God, where's your presence? We don't see nothing. There's nothing happening here. God's over there. So they had to follow the cloud. They had to follow the fire. In order to see the hand of God. Write this down here. It says, Lord, be with me because what you've called me to do is bigger than me. Lord, be with me because what you've called me to do is bigger than me. See, you need to do some great things. You think, well, I can never be a Bill Gates or I can never be a, a you, know, you know, whatever. I can never be this. I can never be that big of an impact. Yes, you can. You can impact your world. You can impact one person. You can impact two people. You can impact three people. And those three people impact those other three, and it keeps on multiplying. Who knows? You make an impact in somebody. Share, your, share the testimony. Share God with one person, and that one person then, then is going to do something great and then do something to thousands. 
Maybe that person was dealing with, a, or with an alcohol problem. Maybe that person was dealing with a drug problem, and you helped them get free, and they came up with something, an idea, an, an invention or something, and it, a breakthrough, and because their mind was set free, something changed. Amen? Things that you don't know. See, we don't think the way God thinks. Here's the last one. Here's the last one. Pray for protection. It says, 1 Chronicles 4.10, and keep me from harm. If you only just mention the four, the four things that we talked about, it's better than nothing, really. If you just really mention, God, I want to pray for protection, Lord. Help me. Be with my, be, I want your presence with me, Lord. Uh, uh, be, uh, let me have an influence, and Lord, I just pray that you bless me. Even just saying those, three, those four words and not really going through the prayer of Jabez is, is good enough because what you want to do is get the prayer out and start claiming what belongs to you. The prayer of Jabez is just a pattern. The devil is going to come up to you whether you say his name or not. <laughs> People have said, well, I don't want to pray against the devil. I don't want to pray because he's going to attack me if I keep on. He's going to attack either way. I don't want to stir up any hornet's nest. You're gonna, he's going to stir it up anyway. His M.O. is stealing, killing, and destroying. That's, that's his M.O., that's what he wants to do. He doesn't make deals. He doesn't say, all right, I'll let you have some fun for a little bit, and then I'll let you off the hook. No. Bible says sin comes, and sin wants a payment. Sin wants, hey, I pay you. I want it back. Come on. There's wages that needs to be paid. And the devil will then pay, wants that payment. And that payment is bondage. That payment is, is be, not being able to be free in your mind, free in your life. The, the, and the enemy, he's not fair. He don't fight fair. He comes after what your weakest thing is, and he, he fights dirty. And he's, he's got plans to take you down, to take your family down, to take generational curses and keep them going in your life, keep them going in your family, keep, the, keep that divorce going, keep that mental problem going, keep that issue going, keep that debt going, keep all that, keep it going. The devil just wants to do that. He don't fight fair. He don't like you. He don't like me because the Bible says you and I were made in the image of God. So when he looks at you and I, he sees Jesus. He sees God. He sees his creation. He says, I want to take that creation down. But see, the Bible says, nothing formed against you shall prosper. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, 8, it says, the devil is roaming around like a lion seeking who he can devour. He can't just devour anybody. Nobody can curse you. I don't care if you show up tomorrow at your house and there's a deer head in your, in your front porch, all right? I think that happened to somebody. I don't know. Somebody told me that. Oh, yeah, one of my coworkers said, yeah, my dog brought a, a deer head. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> I don't care what happens to you. The Bible says no one can curse what is blessed. The blood of Jesus that's upon your life, the blood of Jesus, the protection that's upon your life, nobody can curse you. Nobody can harm you. If they touch you, they're touching God. But if you believe that their curse can harm you, you open the door and let them right in. But God says in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, here's our last scripture, who shall separate me from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, shall hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We're just not conquerors. We're more than conquerors. To him who love us. Nothing can harm you when God is with you. So here's the, here's, the, here's the thing that I pray. Lord, strengthen me and protect me from every attack of the enemy. Lord, strengthen me in and protect me from the every attack of the enemy. Lord, strengthen me and protect me from every attack of the enemy. So we can, we can talk about this. Here, this is the, the ending part. There's the last, the last part blanks. Uh, the last two blanks down there is prayer isn't about God moving toward us. Prayer is about us moving towards God. Prayer isn't about God moving toward us. Prayer is about us moving towards God. So the four things here, and then, and then we're going to pray and, and, and sing a quick song. Pray, pray for blessings. Pray for influence. Pray for, for, pray for the presence to be with you, with you and pray for protection. I'll read, the song, I'll, read, uh, the, I'll read that scripture one more time. 
Jabez cried out to the Lord, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, enlarge my territory, that your hand be with me, keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. And here's what I have to say to you. Jabez didn't talk about his pain more than he honored God and talked about his blessings. So we want to talk about God. We want the blessing of God to come on us. We want the protection of God. And what we need to do is pray in a way that honors him, that says, God, you're, I'm going I'm to amplify you more than I'm going to bring this, this problem. And that's what we start need, that we got to have. It's a pattern, a prayer pattern of Jabez, how we can have in our life. Let's pray right now. Father God, I, wanna, I, I ask you to bless this church and bless those that are watching right now, Lord. Bless their family. Bless their finances. Bless their, their dreams, their marriage. God, make us influencers in our world. Make us to be able to, to, to bless people in a great way, not just financially, but caring enough to listen. Father, I ask you, Lord, to, God, keep us, keep our life uh, intact so that we can impact the world in a mighty way. Lord, help us to see the way you see. Help us to feel the way you feel. God, we want to walk with you as a church family, Lord. We want to we walk with you, Lord, Father, individually in our personal walk with you, Lord. Lord, we want to we always be in prayer in every situation. Pray. Father, before I make that, that move, I'm going to pray. Before I send that email, Lord, I'm going to pray. Lord, before I do anything, I want to pray. In every situation, I want to pray. Father, go, go with us, Lord. Go with us as we go, Lord. Go with our kids, Father, to school. Lord, protect them, Lord. May we, may we pray for them as they leave. No matter where they go, Father, we're always praying. We're always praying for our kids. We're always praying protection for our family. We're always praying a protection for our loved ones. And Lord, today, I thank you, Lord, for those that are going to take a turn and make a decision to follow you. And today is the day that God wants us to come to him and say, Lord, I need you to be the Lord of my life. If you don't know him today, and those of you that are watching by, by video, if you don't know him today, and you might say, God, I don't know him like the way you, like you, you know him, man. You talk to him like he's a, a friend, because he is a friend. Let's all say this together. Those of you watching by live stream or by video, just, just repeat after me. Father God, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Forgive me, Lord, of those sins, the mistakes, the bad decisions that I made. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to come and die for me. I accept him in my heart as Lord and Savior. God, I turn my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come on, give God a praise. Give